I don't think Dylan remembers how to do this, fellas. I don't think I remember how to do a podcast, fellas. I'm gonna be real. Yeah, I think you have to talk, but I don't think you know how to do that. I definitely don't know how to talk. No. Okay, so. <laughs> We're back. His name is John Cena! Don't, don't play that, dude. We're gonna get fucking copyright strike. Hey, I didn't play the whole song. WWE is gonna be like, oh, oh, they said it! They said John Cena! <laughs> get him! <laughs> Dylan, if the fucking Fire Emblem video didn't get copyright struck for that, <laughs> we'll be fine. I'm trying to remember if it did. I think it did. I think it did get copyright struck. I don't know if it was for John Cena, but it definitely got hit for something. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember. I'll have to look. Uh, welcome to Nonstop Debate. This is an off topic. As I'm sure you've seen, we're going to talk about Doki Doki again today. We've got the boy Joey. Who's apparently just died. He's just no longer alive. He passed out. He just kind of... Uh, yeah, so anyways... There he is. Dylan Crazy. I'm, I actually don't exist. Oh. Only Monica. Figment of so, our imagination over here. Yeah, what the fuck are you talking about, Dylan? <laughs> Figment of Monica's imagination. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so... We, we touched on Doki Doki before just like the base game so today we're gonna we're gonna talk doki doki plus specifically the side stories the i can't i can't remember if we talked about monica and her like escape essentially i really can't remember if we talked about that so we're gonna touch on that a little bit today but uh yeah we're mainly just gonna go through the side stories mostly joey because i have not had time to like go through all of them again <laughs> really need you to. I really need you to lead the conversation. Uh, you, here, buddy. You, 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 you really need me to uh, carry you. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately for you, I also do not have enough time to go through all of them. This is gonna be a great episode. Wow. This is gonna be. Thank you, Jer. Thank your immaculate you. soundboard duties, as always. Mm -hmm. You're you're incredible. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Jesus Christ. I need so to, anyway, I need to turn you down, Jesus. Soundboard. I think we can out. now talk about the first one at least. First one's easy enough, you know. Yeah. So the first side one. stories are there's one, two, three. There's six side stories and a little epilogue, which is technically the seventh one, I suppose, but it's not really that long, so. But, um, yeah, you'll unlock these as you play through Doki Doki Plus, and, uh, I mean, obviously, spoiler alert, because we're going to be cracking this whole game wide open, but, I mean, you wouldn't be listening to this anyway, regardless if you, uh, hadn't played through Doki Doki. I mean, no one's even watching this, so... I mean, what, what's the point? Hey, you, that's you never know. mean, Joey. You never know. <laughs> you know. Like ten years down the road, someone finds this podcast and they're just like, "Oh, hey, Doki Doki, very cool." Oh yeah, Doki Doki, that twenty-year-plus game, <laughs> my favorite. Yeah. Twenty. You don't even know what a twenty-year-plus game is, Joey. <laughs> this shit came out in 2017, bro. It's like five. Bitch years ass, old. only 18 years old, doesn't know what a 20-year-old-plus game is. Fuck off. Out Literally of here. still in diapers when Doki Doki <laughs> came out. 
<laughs> okay, uh, let's let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. Yeah. So the first side story is called Trust. Also, um, just a quick note, uh, lore-wise, that you find in the game files, the side stories take place in an alternate reality where the protagonist doesn't exist and Monica does not have uh, awareness that she's in a video game. No, I'm pretty sure the pro tag still exists. They're just not the pro tag. Not in the side stories. Yeah, not in the side stories. Because lore-wise, uh, Metaverse, the people who created Doki Doki, quote unquote, as like a simulation to test and see how like normal people would respond and react to finding out that they li like lived in a simulation. So they give Monica access to like. They, they make her aware that she's in a video game, and then they're studying how she, like, reacts with that information and what she does. So um, basically, it's an elaborate way to say this is a prequel to Danganronpa 2. I guess in a way, yeah. Of course. But they... They're testing this, and they need, like, a baseline for their testing. <clears throat> and the side stories, uh... Universe, essentially, is, like, all of the girls at a base level no one has, like, awareness. It's like, this is them. And this is kind of how they're comparing, okay, how did Monica change from not having awareness to having awareness? How did she advance? What did she do with this information? You know? Um, and the protagonist in the main game was created by Monica as a way for her to communicate with the outside world. The, the people who created Doki Doki, like the simulation, they didn't make the protagonist. Monica did. <laughs> They're just kind of like, how did she do that? But they just kind of went with it. So. Knowing that, uh, there is not going to be any, like, fucked up scary shit in the side stories. There is going to be some foreshadowing, though. Which is fun. Of course. So. I do remember that Joey and I enjoy trust the most out of all the side stories. I think, Jerry, you were even present when we were playing through this one. Yeah, a little bit, but I wasn't, like, fully, like, aware of the situation and whatnot. Yeah. So, the first one is Trust, and this starts off with Monica being the sole member of the Literature Club. She has no other members, and I guess she's been trying for, like, weeks to get other people to sign up, and no one is like, joined. And I think she's, like, right on the cusp of giving up. And then Sayori walks in, and they end up becoming friends pretty quickly, and she becomes the first member and the vice president of the literature club. Anything to add, Joseph? Oh, that's where I'm supposed to <laughs> come in? Okay. That's why I'm be quiet. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was just like, okay, awkward pause, but okay, so yeah. Sayori, you know, she's a bubbly personality to add to the, uh, the up-and-coming literature club with only one member, soon to be two members. And so, you know, Sayori joins. They have fun. They talk about trying to come up with different ways to, you know, find more different members to add to the club. And eventually, you know, they make some posters. And they give some posters to a few students. Specifically, you know, a haha, -ha, a girl later that we find out to be Yuri. Yeah. Who we meet later in the next side story. Who reads you know, alone where... to herself in a classroom. Yeah, because she's a fucking nerd. <laughs> fucking loser. She's not a nerd, bro. She just likes to read. Jeez. God, maybe she, should, maybe she should get some fucking friends then. <laughs> Gosh. That's it, Joey. It's time for you to go into the locker. <laughs> oh no. Not the locker. Five, five foot two, have an ass. Joey's like, oh no, high school, all over again. Ah oh, shit, hot foot. Here we go again. Ah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they so, uh, yeah. they just kind of come up with some ideas on the first day, and then they uh, they peace out and they come back the next day for uh, club. And Sayori's got more poster ideas, and I guess she lets it slip to Monica that she writes poetry. Monica's like, oh, that's cool. So they kind of start, like, 
getting into poetry. Sayori's essentially because of this. Sayori's like the sole reason that you write poetry at all in that fucking club because it became such a strong part of the club's integrity just because of this story between Monica and Sayori. So. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the uh, Sayori basically tried to come up with, you know, a list of what to do. And she accidentally, you know, wrote, wrote a poem on the back side of the list that she was meant to give to Monica for ideas. And Monica was like, oh, shit, poems? Fucking badass. Perfect for literature club. <laughs> badass? Hell yeah. <laughs> and Sayori is basically like, oops, you know, I didn't mean to let you see that, but, you know... We should do some poetry, because, you know, poetry allows you to express your, yourself in ways that, you know, you normally couldn't in the real world. You can show your vulnerabilities unless you do through, you know, some poems. Yeah. That's if you use a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Only pussies write poetry, says Chair the Manliest Man Man. Yeah, fuck poems. <laughs> poems are for pussies. <laughs> no. Poems are okay, stop. Uh, said the writer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your point? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Christ. One thing I do want to note is that, like, we're, we're used to seeing Monica in, like, the base game. You know, she's, she knows what she's doing. She has her style hammered out. She understands, like, poetry and writing, and she's very confident. She is nothing like that in the side stories. Especially in this one, you kind of get to see her, like, bloom into that. I feel like Sayori didn't change that much, but Monica definitely had, like, a starting point in the side stories. Yeah, where she already... was, like, not at the point yet where you originally knew her, you know. Yeah, Sayori trying to, like, you know, bring confidence to Monica's self. Because yeah. Monica was always, like, like aw. <laughs> Like, I'm trying to be perfect, but, like, it's not how I want you to be. And so you're always just there, like, girl, shut the fuck up. You're, <laughs> you're already doing so nice. You need to have more confidence in yourself. Yeah. You're doing so good, and you don't even want to acknowledge yourself. You should stop being a perfectionist and just, you know, let the words flow across the paper and, you know, express yourself however you want to express yourself. You shouldn't try to police your thoughts and what you want to say. Just I'm put it on the paper. I'm reminded of a scene from an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie now, where he's like a like a solo like uh like a Rambo guy, and he goes up to this one kid. He's like, "You're a funny guy, Sully. I like you. That's why I'm gonna kill you last." <laughs> Joke says he killed him first, and he is like, "Remember, Sully? I promised to kill you last." It's right, Major. You did. I lied. <laughs> uh, That's exactly how I feel about like Monica and. Sayori do oh. all this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because they have such a strong connection right at the start, and then Sayori's the first one to go as soon as Monica's like, no, what if me want a boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> mm, yes, what if me want to be the main love route? Monica mm. hugs Sayori. It's okay. We'll be friends forever. Also, Monica, hmm, boyfriend? <laughs> Mmm, <laughs> boyfriend who who wants you to You really kind of left her hanging, you know? <laughs> God. I love Monica, dude. So, yeah, they make some flyers, and I think, I think, does Monica accidentally read Sayori's poem before they give the flyer to Yuri? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Sayori basically accidentally left her folder in the classroom when they were, you know, sending out flyers. And Monica read, you know, one of her poems yeah. that Sayori had in there, which, you know, if you know anything about the main game, you know, it'll be, it's a not-so-nice poem. It's a bit oh, of a... Oh, no, it happens private. after. It happens after they give the poster to Yuri. Ah, afterwards. They, I, yeah, they, they give the poster to Yuri, they... Feeling satisfied, the wiki sits feeling satisfied with their progress. They decide it's time to go home, and Sayori leaves first. Monica stays behind in the club room, and just kind of like reflects on everything they talked about. 
and she just kind of like comes to some understandings about poetry, like, oh man, maybe I've been thinking about this all wrong. And then she notices a folder that Sayori dropped, and she ends up reading uh, one of Sayori's poems. Mm-hmm. And yes, I have the wiki open. Like I said, I could, I didn't have time to refresh myself on this shit before we recorded. It's understandable. But also, god damn, that poem. Yeah. Fucking incredible. Become oh, the flower. Um, very good. I remember that we read through it, and it's like... It's weird, because like when I first played through Doki Doki, the poems didn't really do much for me, and I didn't I didn't have like as much of an understanding of writing that it was just like, oh, it's just words on a page. And I didn't give it too much thought, except for like maybe one or two here and there that really made me think about it. But coming back through side stories like more recently, when I have a better understanding of writing, and especially knowing everything about Sayori and like what happens in the main game, like reading Become the Flower, I don't remember much about it, but I remember that it's dark and it's kind of serious. Oh yeah, L- let me let me read it out since I have it. Well, out. Why don't you go ahead and read Become the Flower? Again? Yeah, yeah, let me read it out. You know, well, just enjoy a little bit of a uh, poetry. You know, don't do you want me to put ominous it? music in the background? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? For Become a Fl- why not? Why not, dude? Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Ah, become a flower. A feeling of joy is a flower plucked from the ground. The color, the scent, is so pretty in my hair. Every day I pluck some flowers as though they grew just for me. A lifetime of peace and herbs yanked away in an instant. All for me. All for joy. I need more. I need more joy. I need more happy. Pluck, pluck, pluck every day. Pluck, 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 so pretty in my hair. Pluck, 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 you're going to die, and you too. Beneath my feet, a flower stands alone, it beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends, I look in every direction, and in the field I stand in, a prosperous field, the barren wasteland, the fruits of my labor, the carnage of my joy. And that is why I've decided I must become the flower. And that's that. Which, like, holy shit, what a poem, Sayori. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. I don't know how that well that turned out on your guys' end, because I saw my voice going flickering on and off. I don't know if the song was playing the entire time or not. I don't think we picked up all of it, but it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. That poem is fucking great. Like, it perfectly encapsulates just how depressed and how Sayori just feels about herself in yeah. general. And I feel like it really, um, it's also like a testament to the writing improvement of Dan Salvato, is who I'm assuming writes all the poems for all the girls. I'm not really sure. I'll have to look at the credits. I'm sure it's listed somewhere and I just never looked for it, but I feel like the poems and the side stories are a big improvement over the ones in the main game. And I don't know if that's just me not, again, not having as much writing experience when I played through the first game, like originally back in 2017, or if it's just me recognizing, like, I don't know if I'm just, like, tuned out to the original poems and I really, like, tuned in to the newer ones and side stories, but, dude, like, all the poems that popped up in side stories are just so good, and I feel like they hit me so much more than the original ones did. Not that they were bad, just... I feel like these ones are better, you know? I also feel like we finally get to know these characters far better than in the previous game. Yeah. Since this is more like a, a, a slice of life sort yeah. of deal. This one is just a straight up visual novel. There's no branching paths, there's no choices, because the player character is not here. It's just... Yeah, what sort of visual novel is it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it literally is a visual novel. It's just like the side stories are just a straight up like book at this point, mm-hmm. you know. Just a 
click, 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 and read. Yeah. And that's about it. There's, there's less interaction, but, I mean, you're not... If you're a fan of the games and you're interested in the side stories, like, you're not really here for the interaction anyway. You're here for the characters, you know? And if you're not, that's exactly. fine. Like, some people probably skip the side stories because they didn't care. It's like, hey, that's fine, you know? But they're there for the people I mean, who want them. them. And they really add to the characters, I think. Especially Monica, because I like... I don't know... I don't know if it's just me being a fan of her, but I really liked watching her, like, start off at the bottom and work her way up to, like, when I first, like, was introduced to her all those years ago, you know? Like, it, it was nice meeting her when she didn't even know how to write a poem or, like, write something with feeling and just kind of watching her open well, the side well, stories and learn. Boy, well, there's no real easy way to say this, but, uh... <laughs> look... <laughs> You're a simp. <laughs> I'm gonna have to report you back to Kiss. Shut up. But no, and it's the I same. I had to. Sayori, like I said, doesn't change much. Um, but even like Natsuki and Yuri, I think it's really interesting and really fun. Just kind of watching them all like meet each other for the first time and learn how to interact and like be comfortable around each other. You know. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest like strength to the side stories. Ah, that, uh, speaking of growth, like, I, with the three you mentioned, uh, Monica, Natsuki, and Yuri, yeah, I think they had some great growth. But with Sayori, I feel like the purpose she serves is to just be, you know, the character who we always know and love, who's always there to just be there for you. Yeah. To just, you know, help Until out. Until she fucking you know, dies. Until well, yeah, she fucking dies. That's, that, that's her whole character, too, though. It's like, and it's very... It's opened up very well in part two of Trust that we're going to get to here in just a moment. But she, like her whole, and it's, you know, it's even expressed in Become a Flower in the poem. Her whole purpose is just to make sure that everyone she cares about is happy and doing well. But if any of that focus is taken off of them and put onto her, she just immediately regrets and feels bad. Because it's like, no, no. Don't worry about me. You're the one who needs to be happy. Exactly. Because when p people worry about Sayori, Sayori just feels bad because they try to worry about her and see what's They're going on. They're wasting their time mind. and energy worrying about her when they could be worrying about themselves. Or others. I, I was going to say, like, and this goes to, like, what the game directly says, is that she feels bad when people worry about her because... If they look into what she thinks about, they'll just be sad. And she doesn't want that. She just wants to make people happy and, you know, exactly. laugh, smile. That's not what she wants. Letting people see how sad she is just makes her feel even worse about herself. But then, you know, her development with Monica and their relationship is so fucking good. They finally learn to just express themselves and show their vulnerabilities to each other. Yeah. And just be good friends. And it was so nice. And it was so wholesome. And I loved it's it. It's the big hurdle of trust is when Monica finds out that Sayori might be depressed. And she tries to, like, make sure Sayori is okay. And she... I like how it doesn't take her too long to understand. But they also reach some kind of, like, agreement where it's like, okay... I, I understand you don't like people to worry about you, so I won't worry about you. But I am here if you need me. And part of the reason I think that this one is called Trust is because Sayori does put that trust in Monica. And at the end, when they're holding each other, they're, you know, she just kind of like lets it all out, tells Monica how she really feels about herself, and it's just heartbreaking, you know, and Monica's just, just comforting. She's just like, it's all right, you know. She's not, like, exactly. saying anything. She's just kind of there, and that's, that's all Sayori really needed, you know. Just someone to be there. Because, like, I, I, we, we went a little too far. I want to talk about, like, the thing that led up to that, just hug scene. It's just... yeah. Like, ooh, we can, we can like Monica was just, yeah, like Monica was just struggling 
to even come up with a poem by herself in the club room. Yeah. She was just letting the pen stay on the paper. It created a big ink blot. And then I do like, remember oh. that because I did try to rewatch a little bit of Trust before this, um, mm -hmm. and I didn't have, I wasn't able to watch all of it, but I glance up every now and then and try and take in what I could. And that was one thing that I do remember is that she just like leaves her pen on the paper for too long, and it just makes like an ink stain. And then under it on the paper, she writes, "This is what I get for trying to be creative: a stain or something." Oh uh, like no, that. It was, that was it was, all the it was like. No, it was like, this is what I try to get for trying to be perfect. A stain. Oh, yeah, something perfect. like that. Yeah. Because she, she was all about being a perfectionist yeah. rather than just trying to naturally express herself. And she was trying to, you know, work on that and take Sayori's advice to heart, you know? Yeah. So she was like, you know what? Fine. Yeah. A stain. This is what I get for my perfectionism. Fuck me. It's and then, funny you know, because Sayori, it's like unironically a little deep. Like, it's, mm. it's not a bad, like, it's like it's not a poem, but it's not a bad, like, sentiment of a poem for her to just write that. Because I think that's even how she, like, she looks at it, she's like, huh, you know, I think I get it now. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, a little bit after, Sayori goes to the club room, sees that Monica is struggling, and she's like, you know, I want to open up to Monica. And she takes that sheet, and she writes, I want to die on it. You know, fully oh, yeah. going out there with her depression, showing it, putting it all on the table so that Monica can see. Because she wants to share it now. She feels like she can trust Monica. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See what I did there? Uh -huh. Tr trust <laughs> Monica. Up, <laughs> uh. But yeah, it's, God, it's just so good. I feel kind of bad, because yeah. I feel like for the sake of time, we're going to have to blow through the other side stories a lot faster than we did this one, but I really feel like this one needs the focus. Even if you're listening to this, and you haven't seen the side story, or even if you're listening to this and you have, you should go just like watch or play through Trust in Doki Doki Plus, because it is just phenomenal. Yeah, I loved it so much. And then, and then while they were hugging, Monica was like, why did you even decide to open up to me? Like, what if I became one of those people that would just always take pity on you and worry about you, going against what you wanted? And so it's so just like, so what? I, I just felt like putting my trust in you. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I just felt like you would be different. And that's all the reason she needed. And at the end of the day, it just worked out, you know? It doesn't need some grandiose reasoning to it or whatever to work out. Because depression just happens, you know? Yeah. Man, I, I just love how this game tackled, like, depression in such a good way with Sayori. I appreciate it so much. It was so nice. Yeah. Because it's like... I feel like it kind of gave me a, a better understanding of it, too. Because I always assumed that it was like... You know, I guess I don't I don't really know what I thought it was, but like trust kind of head empty. <laughs> well not head empty, <laughs> I mean it's like I I had an idea in my head of what depression was, but I've never been depressed, so I guess I never like knew. And I just tried to think about it, like what did I think it was? And I just realized like I guess I don't really know. It is because I've never been depressed. Yeah. But trust kind of it kinda of gave the idea to me or rather the understanding that it's it's just like something that you live with, you know? It's not something that defines who you are, it's just something you have to live with. Like uh, being born crippled, I guess. I don't know, that's probably not a good comparison. I don't, I don't know anything about this stuff, because I'm not someone who's yeah, ever yeah. been in that position, but... You know, it's... Eh, they'll, they'll get it. They understand. Like, Sayori's something. not defined by her depression, you know? It's not like, walk, exactly. walk on eggshells around Sayori. That's part of the reason she doesn't tell people that she's depressed, because she doesn't want them to walk on eggshells around her, treat her like she's a bomb waiting to go off. And I get that, mm -hmm. you know? So, I... She doesn't want any special treatment, and that's understandable, yeah. you know? Just 
you, you want to be treated like any other person. You don't want to be treated especially like you're some sort of weird creature that needs that attention or whatever. Exactly. So, man, we, we don't treat people like we treat Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin is literally a bomb waiting to go off. One day he's just going to snap and kill like eight people. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, but a, but anyways, anyways, you know, it ends off with you know the two of them having mutual trust in one another. They're comfortable. They're you know ready to share their vulnerabilities with each other, and it's all nice and dandy. Yeah. And then you know, ooh, it ends off with a little cliffhanger about a girl peeking inside into the room. Yeah. Which oh, brings us to that. understanding, which is primarily between Yuri and Sayori. <laughs> we're 30 minutes in and we're just getting to the second side story, so like I said, we're probably going to have to start blowing through these a lot faster, but again, I really feel like trust deserves the focus. Not that these ones don't, Absolutely. but I'll be honest, I enjoyed, I enjoyed trust probably the most out of all of these. Oh yeah, trust was by far my favorite. Yeah. Like, 10 out of 10 side stories. So good. Yeah. Nothing I would change about it. Like, honestly, there's nothing to change about it that would make it better. Just already perfect. Yeah. Okay, so, so, anyways. I kind of remember some of this. I'm kind of reading through for part one of understanding. I do remember this. When Yuri first comes into the club... She's very, like, forward with sharing her, like, books, and she's, like, excited about, like, yeah, this is what I've been reading and stuff, and Sayori gets really forward, like, well, you know, we could get to know each other first, too, maybe we could be friends, and Yuri's just like, I just came here because literature club, books, yeah, I like, like to read. Well, you're just like, look, friendship? Get that shit out of my face. I'm a fucking God, loser a and a nerd. Yeah. And I'm alone. Hey, let me read my books in peace. She also said that she took a few days to build the courage up to join the club. Because she was worried she came across as too inconsiderate to Monica before. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And eventually, you know, Yuri comes back, apologizes to Yuri for, you know, being a bit too, you know, like, uncaring, I suppose, for what she said. Uh, feeling like she was too overbearing. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Say Yuri gets more eager about joining Yuri for reading, saying maybe it's something fun that they can do together. Which kind of puts Yuri's uh, fears at ease. I'm starting to remember some of this as I'm reading, but it's just making it so hard to talk about. And I, yes, Dan. Again, it's like these other ones aren't bad, but I will, I will say that they did not stick with me as much as the first one did. Absolutely. So, I do remember that uh, they get into like a little bit of a heated discussion. And Yuri just kind of, like, leaves. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the next day, Sayori's just, like, in the club room by herself. She's like, man, I fucked it up. Yuri's not going to come back. Uh, and Monica finds Yuri outside the club room. And... Oh, Monica and Yuri walk through the school. That's right. I forgot about this part. Ah, I thought yeah. they went back in together. Not, not... And eventually they go through a walk through the school, yeah. Yeah, she kind of talks about how yeah, she's not good in social yeah. situations, and Sayori is just like, a lot. <laughs> too, yeah, she's too <laughs> outgoing for her, her tastes, and she also thought that Sayori just wasn't that into the book that she, you know, recommended, that it wasn't suited to her taste, so she was like, oh no, I fucked it up. Yeah. But Sayori's just like, nah. This is fine. <laughs> it's just, just the dog in the burning building. This is fine, you know? <laughs> Great meme. Yuri ends up uh, going back into the club room with Monica. 
Yeah, she'd rather just have Sayori admit that she's not into the same sort of like books that she's in, same sort of genres. Yeah. And then uh, she and Yuri kind of talk. And uh, I guess they figure things out and talk things over in the club room while Monica's like sitting at the front desk. And, uh, you know, j- just like with Sayori and Monica at the end of this one, they just. They're not like. They're not like friends, no. friends. They're not like close, close friends, but they're definitely Man. like on a, the same page now about each other. Man, I don't know why people don't like the stuff that I like reading, Yuri says, uh, says standing there with her copy of Emergence in hand. <laughs> oh, God. She literally. Uh, that's one of the things that immediately drew me to Yuri when I initially played the game is like she's into like horror books and shit. And I was like, yo. Her left her mind. Oh, he doesn't know. Joey doesn't know. Emergence? Of course I know about Emergence. No, no he's, say, he's saying I don't know. And I don't. Dylan, the oh, book Dylan title does not sound know. familiar to me, but I do know that Yuri reads horror uh, novels, so I'm assuming it's uh, nothing pretty. <laughs> those who know, they know. No, those Moving who know, on. They know. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. You can, yeah, ask, so you can ask Noah about it later. <laughs> So yeah, understanding just, you know, ends with Sayori, Monica, and uh, not Monica, Sayori and Yuri just, you know, hanging out, reading a book together, tr- just trying to understand their different perspectives on books and what genres they like and why they like it. And then, you know, they have fun. It was nice. And they just had a mutual understanding of what the other needed when, you know, reading. And it was nice. Oh yeah, fun. And Yuri brings up Say you already teaching her to write poetry also. Yeah, it's all because of Sayori. Yeah. Best girl. Best girl, bro. <laughs> Third best. Uh, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Fucking monkistin. Fucking basic bitch ass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyways, third side story. Respect. Respect. This one I knew was gonna, like... The whole, like, point of this one I knew was going to come up at some point in the side stories. So the whole mm. thing with respect is that Natsuki joins the literature club. A dubious little creature dubious getting up to mischief. <laughs> this is no good. Oh, buddy. So, just like in the main game, the only thing Natsuki really likes to read is manga. So the whole, like, the whole idea of respect is that she's like, hey, I wanted to join the literature club. I like to read manga. And Monica and everyone is like, those aren't books. And the, the whole like discussion comes down to respecting that Natsuki likes to read something different than everyone else. Yeah, and uh, that's honestly about it. Yeah, I, mean, I was too yeah. slow, because I wanted to play this as soon as you said, those aren't books. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe other people, maybe other people share that opinion. Maybe there's like, maybe there's like a, a hot debate out there about if manga is literature, literature or not. But literature elitists, of course. I mean, personally, if it's book shaped and has words like a book, it's a book. <laughs> wow. Wow. Dylan confirms hentai is a book. I know. Profound, isn't it? I mean, it's wow, like, incredible. like, think about it like this, right? Children's books have pictures and words. Manga has pictures and words. You telling me children's books aren't books? You telling me that's not literature? Oh, so true. Got him. Yeah. Big think brain. About, think about that, just in case anyone out there actually fucking thinks that. I mean, we do live in a world where people who are highly rated film critics think the MCU movies aren't uh, film. I mean, like... Well, they are filmed because they are movies. That does not mean all of them are good. Well, they're, they're like saying, like, Academy oh, uh, standard film oh. making. Oh, yeah, I can understand that. I mean, there's a lot of television shows out there that are really fucking good. They're better than a lot of movies we get nowadays, and they don't get shit for recognition. So, yep. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a sad time. Oh, yeah. Uh, going back to respect, 
you know, it basically just gives Monica some more uh, development, you know? Yeah, it's just, like, it's just a lot of, like, discussion later. between Monica and Natsuki, primarily. They're the two key characters in this one. It's just a lot of back and forth of Monica coming to an understanding with Natsuki. And that understanding is respect for different types of literature. So Exactly. And, you know, by then, they just share all their favorite kinds of literature with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, they share their manga, they share their fantasy, they share their whatever. I think the definite yeah, highlight of this one is the ending where Monica shows Natsuki her piano in the music room. Because Monica like, admits to her, she hasn't, like, I think in the, like, beginning of this one or the beginning of the second one, Monica's been showing the literature club later than the others, and it's because she's been practicing piano, but she hasn't been telling anybody. And Natsuki's the first one that she shows this to, and she shows her, like, what she knows so far. She plays her a little music on the piano. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Monica admits that, you know, she read a bit of Natsuki's manga, and she revealed that she started to learn how to play, play piano after, you know, reading about a character in the manga that played piano. Wow. Hey, hey, Natsuki, I'm going to play piano. You want to hear my favorite uh, uh, music composition I I have? Starts playing Giorno's theme, yeah. <laughs> but it's just a piano bit. <laughs> oh, I went through this. I, I went through this last paragraph right here. I totally spaced this detail. The whole reason Monica started learning piano is because she uh, read through some of Natsuki's manga, and she related to a character in the manga who liked to play piano. So she, uh, she was like, I always wanted to learn how to play piano. So she actually like took time out of her day after school to like Yo. sit in the music room and learn. No, I totally that's literally that. what I just said. That's literally what I just said. Is it? I must have spaced it because I was reading. That. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Man. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Sorry. Well, I'm anyway. the dick here. Anyways, it ends off with the piano stuff. They learn to respect each other's taste in literature. And they apologize for being so rude to each other. Yeah. You know, nice. Uh, not, not nothing too special, but nice. I also want to note, like, very. I was not surprised at all that out of all the characters joining the literature club, it took Natsuki the longest to like come to an understanding with each member. Oh, obviously. I think it's also because she was like the newest out of the four to join, and um, you know she's got like. She's got, like, space that she has to make with every character at that point, but Natsuki also is, like, you know, naturally, like, abrasive and very, like, very, like, loud about her opinions, I guess. So, I wasn't too surprised. I was like, eh, he's really fighting a lot of this. <laughs> oh, buddy. Uh, Let's see. Next up is, uh, Balance. Fourth side story, which mostly deals with Sayori and Hey, Hey, Hey. Natsuki again. Yeah. This one is Sayori so and Natsuki. It's. What is this? Sayori is eager to learn about manga. Yep. Go ahead, sorry. No, no, no. You go ahead. <laughs> Sayori. He wants to be there to correct you for being stupid again, Dylan. No, yeah, yeah, fair. Man, no. Sayori go ahead, go ahead. wants to learn more about manga and read more of Natsuki's manga, and Natsuki's okay with that. But as soon as, like, poetry comes into it, Natsuki's very, like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Ooh, yucky, disgusting poetry? Ooh, that's not manga. If I remember that's right, I like... think it is. <laughs> that's not manga? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally came up to anything that isn't manga and was like, Holy Jesus. What is that? What <laughs> the fuck is that? <laughs> uh... Ah, but yeah, you know, basically, Sarah's just trying her to get Natsuki to open up a bit more, try and expand her horizons with trying to, you know, read a bit more poetry, try and write a bit of poetry. And, you know, she keeps on trying to do it for a few times. And eventually, you know, Natsuki gets a bit fed up and says that she feels like she's getting drowned by Sayori with, like, how much she's trying to shove it all down her throat with poetry, poetry, poetry. Yeah. And Monica's like, yeah, understandable. I'll try and talk to Sayori. Yeah, Sayori's but a lot. Not, like, nah, bro. 
Yeah, just like so, Natsuki's just like nah, bro. I'll, I'll handle it myself. Except she doesn't. Uh, <laughs> except she doesn't. <laughs> I don't even awesome. think she says she'll handle it herself. She's just like no, nah, don't talk to her. It's fine. And then just lets the problem fester. <laughs> Of course, as a Natsuki does, as one does, obviously. Uh, and then part two of Bounce. And during lunch time, Sayori spots Natsuki in the cafeteria and tries to beckon her. Natsuki surprised by an interaction, ducks away, leaving Sayori feeling dejected. Woohoo. Real shame, honestly. Yeah. Natsuki and Monica get to and the club room first, and Sayori wakes out in the hall because she doesn't want to like, go in and see Natsuki, and Yuri ends up giving her a pet talk, of all people, and she's like, okay, I'll go in, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave Natsuki alone. Of course, of course. And eventually Natsuki sees that Sayori and Yuri are coming in, and she's just like, oh shit, oh fuck, <laughs> run. <laughs> Natsuki starts writing, like, an apology letter to Sayori, because she feels like she hurt her feelings. And then after Yuri and Monica leave, it's just those two, and they kind of awkwardly say goodbye. So Yuri yeah, just then, kind of accepts that Natsuki doesn't want to be her friend. And then yeah, Natsuki chases her out into the hallway, and uh... It's just like, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry for ignoring no. you, Sayori. I, I, I apologize. Yeah, I sense I've made a mistake, so <laughs> okay. <laughs> But yes, uh, Natsuki basically just apologizes for ignoring Sayori and like all of the rude behavior that she has, you know, sent towards Sayori since she's not that good with expressing her own feelings. But hey, and Sayori that's fine. apologizes right? for oh. smothering. Yeah, but as you as you know, uh, was uh, mentioned earlier in the other side stories, uh, you know, poetry is a way of expressing itself. Yeah. If you do some poetry, hey, you might express yourself a bit better, Natsuki. You know, it all comes back together, and it's so nice. It all comes back to poetry. Exactly. And who, and who started the poetry chat? Mm. That's right. Best girl Sayori. Best girl. <laughs> uh, well, uh... Boy, there's no real easy way to say this, but... Uh... I'm a so that was yeah, what a... <laughs> balance. We're looking at reflection next. Yep, fifth one is reflection, which focuses on Monica and Yuri. God, fun, I, fun, fun. I that feel like right. I remember this one the least. Oh, oh boy, man, that ain't good for you. Yeah. I do. I will say you. though, I love the CG of her and of Monica and Yuri sitting at the desk together. Yeah, that was nice. You know, our, our wonderful little lesbians just, you know... Oh my god, god I just want to bang you! What the fuck? <laughs> Stop being a pervert. Well, you never seen Mel... You never seen Mel Gear Awesome? I think I have. That sounds uh, familiar. One, it's one of the first Ego Raptor, uh, Ego Raptor animations. Oh, yeah. So yeah, Reflection is basically, you know, Monica and Yuri... You know, Monica wants to read a book with Yuri so they can build their friendship, and Monica chooses a romance novel. You know, the kind that Yuri used to read. But Yuri doesn't want to be reminded of the past since it's painful for her. But hey, that's when the reflection will come in. Haha. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I, I remember this one. Okay, yeah. Y Yuri makes the comment that Natsuki's gonna grow out of manga, and Natsuki's like, uh, bitch? <laughs> Uh, excuse me. I remember. Because this one, this one is like, it's focused on Monica and Yuri, but it's less like Monica and Yuri having disagreement, and more just like <laughs> Monica helping Yuri, like, figure stuff out. Yeah, which is, you know, all nice, fine and Dan, you know? Also, interject with the joke here. <laughs> Uh, Yuri to Natsuki, you're gonna grow out of manga, Natsuki. You see me fucking laughing, my dear? <laughs> Cause she get it? Cause she's short! Ah, yeah! You're always... Funny. 
Jer's just like, oh, Jer's just like, I found my role in this video since I'm not like lending to the conversation. I'm just gonna be the funny soundboard guy. Yeah, of course. Because of, wh why not? You know what? That's okay. Soundboard <laughs> guy. We. Yeah, Jer, Jer can stay out of it. We, this we, time around. <laughs> we need the funny soundboard. This is this is how we this is how we ease back into the podcast. It's just like me struggling to talk about stuff that I can't remember very well, and Jared just doing funny soundboard stuff. Yeah, classic. So, anyways, back to reflection. Now you you want you want to make another funny noise, Jared? <laughs> <laughs> you want to make another funny noise, huh? No. Since I've made a mistake or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all week. <laughs> uh, I would hope so. We're trying to get the podcast back on track. <laughs> it looks like it's a failure. If I could derail it with Scatman's world. Mm -mm. Let's not. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you want to pick this back up, Dylan? I guess that's a no. I'll pick it up for you. You had to right. ask me right when I put a bunch of chips in my mouth. Oh, what chips? God fucking damn it! <laughs> I'm eating Pringles. I didn't really have much option for dinner since I had to record this right when I got home, so I just grabbed a can of Pringles on my way up to work. You eat dinner at 11 o'clock at night? I get off yeah, at almost 10, bro. Things. Shut up. <laughs> and just still things. Don't worry. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Judgmental having ass. Yeah, so eventually, uh, let's see, back to reflection. So, Monica, she starts a special meeting at the club, just wanting to talk about the differences between all the uh, members in a constructive manner. And she uses Sayori as, you know, a little example, talking about how her language may contribute to tension when there's disagreement. And Natsuki is just like, huh? Why do I have to, you know, like, police my own language? Like, what the fuck? Fuck you. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> it really did go that way, didn't it? It really did. I, I appreciate that Monica, Monica tried like... to like be an adult and try and like maturely like put them in a, I guess in a in a space where they could talk about it without people getting upset. But she didn't like take into account that people would get upset anyway, and it all just went to shit oh, yeah. immediately because Natsuki's like, bro. <laughs> It's like, bro, have you not met me before? Yeah. Like, duh? Oh my gosh. And eventually, you know, Monica just wants other people to join in the discussion, wants Yuri to, uh, you know, voice her opinion on manga, and so on and so forth. But Yuri's just like, nah, nothing productive will come out of this. Fuck you. Fuck you. And then she proceeds to, uh, you know, to say some thoughts. Yeah. Anyways, just like Yuri. Uh, next meeting, Sayori tells Natsuki that Monica's been waiting outside the club room in case Yuri doesn't want to come in. And uh, Natsuki doesn't understand that Yuri can't control her feelings and is just kind of pretending like nothing happened because that's how Natsuki like gets past this stuff. She just like forgets it. She's like, whatever. Forget it. Yeah, she, it's she she has an issue of like just always trying to run away rather than Yeah. She doesn't she doesn't resolve the issue. She just like throws it over her shoulder and is like it, it, we'll just never talk about it again. It's fine. Just forget yeah, it. Yeah, if we never yeah, if we forget about it, it never existed. Haha, -ha, nothing happened. There's no problem if we never talk about a problem. Yeah, right? Monica, there's no romance options if we just delete them all, right, Monica? No. Anyways. But uh, she ends up telling Sayori that uh, she always seems to get into fights with people, like everyone, and she feels like she's the problem, not so much Yuri. And she tells Sayori that she has a hard time being vulnerable because she got bullied a lot. <laughs> Which, yeah, because her fucking dad is abusive and doesn't feed her. So she's like, I mean, this all got touched in the main game a little bit, but yeah, Natsuki just like does not get fed. She needs fed, and she's malnourished, and she's 
much younger appearing as a result. Yeah. I wish they actually, like, focused a bit more on that in both the main game and in the side yeah, story. Yeah, it's just kind of briefly mentioned, like, two or three very quick points in the main game. It doesn't get as much focus as, like... I feel like Yuri and Sayori both get more, like, focused than Natsuki does. I think she gets the least out of all of them. It's because if you uh, mention child abuse and then you fucked up the story, everyone's gonna jump down your throat. Yeah, that's all. Literally so fair. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So, I do like though, yeah, that well, they gave like like I like that Dan Salvato gave all the girls like realistic and like very serious like issues behind the scenes. You know, like Sayori's got depression. Yeah. Um, Yuri likes to cut herself. Natsuki's got an abusive dad. Like, it's it's all real-world stuff, you know? And for the most part, aside from Natsuki just not having a ton of focus on hers, I feel like it's all handled really well. Outs outside of the horror element of it all, of course, like walking in and finding Sayori, that's, that shit's gotta hit some chords in, like, a real sense, because I know there's people out there who have walked in on their friends or family just gone like that. It hit my funny bone, but it's kind of a tragic thing. <laughs> I... <laughs> I cope with laughter. I'm kind of insane. <laughs> okay. I laughed I laugh at the suicide. It was funny. <laughs> it was funny to me. Uh, it was funny. Because uh, I, I anyway. saw it coming a mile away. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah, I mean, plot-wise, <laughs> it, it made sense, but it's... <laughs> It's not a, so much a point of, like, knowing it's coming as much as it is, just, like, knowing it's coming and still being affected by it anyway, you know? Yeah. Can't it's relate. It, it's that, because you get put in the, you know, in the Protax shoes where he's, like, hurrying to Sayori's house, like, oh god, she's fine, she's gotta be fine. I, he was the player you are nine times out of ten, right? unless you, yeah. you know, Jer's that one out of ten that's like, yeah, I don't yeah, care. Yeah, I am the one out of ten. Most people, the, of ten. the writing evokes yeah. the emotion where you're in the same shoes as the protagonist, where you're like, no, she didn't kill herself, she's fine. She's gonna be there, she just needs help, we're gonna show up and save the day, and then you open the door and boom, you didn't save shit, she's dead. <laughs> Uh, you're evoking some. Being... You're evoking some very bad memories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just like, oh yeah, you fucked up on this choice, Joey. Oh, every, hey, every, go uh, back. We kind of bullied and make you this when you played. <laughs> so you can save Sayori. Oh, oopsie daisy. Both choices lead to her death. Joey's like, she's gonna <laughs> die, right? And I was like, only if you pick the wrong option. And then I didn't tell him that both <laughs> options were the bad options. <laughs> Which is even more horrendous when you get to the point where you're like, do you tell her you love her? Do you tell her you love her as a friend? Because it's like... <sighs> and I'm just like, make the right choice, Joey, or else she's gone forever. <laughs> Uh, that was the first. Sitting over Why here, I'm like, yeah, this is emotionally stunting, and over here, hey, oh. Joey, let's play this epic prank on him. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, 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 like, I, I, I knew that Doki Doki had, like, some sort of horror element to it, and I was spoiled by a meme about Sayori's hanging. But I really thought I could save her. For, for the sake of keeping him, like, mostly spoiler-free, I told Joey that that was an avoidable death. Ah. Oh, my, my, my despair <laughs> that I felt. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Someone get Nagito Komai. What you've done? you changed the future. You've created a time paradox. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, so Reflection ends with Monica and Yuri getting together, and Monica helps Yuri write, like, an apology letter to Natsuki that really, like, well, like, structures her thoughts and feelings into, like, a letter that Natsuki can read and, like, understand. Because Yuri's not good at, like, saying this stuff without getting, like, flustered. She's or bad at communication, yeah. basically. So... 
And then eventually Yuri, you know, just reflects on her actions, reflects on, like, what she's done, and just reflects on, like, the people around her and how they're actually, like, you know, they're actually nice. Yeah. And are willing to take the time to actually try and get to know her better, which was awesome, you know? Self-love. Um, I think this is the only one that we liked as much as, uh, Trust. Ah, yeah, the one between Natsuki and Yuri. Yeah. This one was very good because you know, in the main game, the original one, you no, know, Natsuki and Yuri were always at ends. These with are each the other. two who butt heads the, the most because they're polar opposites. Yeah, and throughout the side stories, they were butting heads the like pretty much the entire time still as yeah. well. But this one, oh yes, yes. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, basically, this happens, you know, after reflection. Natsuki runs into Yuri during lunch, and they see each other for the first time in a while after their fight. And despite the tension, you know, Yuri wants Natsuki to, you know, stick around and spend lunch with her. Which is very nice. And they try to make amends. They, they've awesome. got this, like, empty nice. stairwell that's, like, down the hall from the cafeteria where they both like to go when they want to be alone. And they end up just spending time here together. And, uh... Yeah, they just kind of grow closer there. I don't think there's a lot of conflict in this one. It's mostly just them finding the, like, even ground to, like, talk to each other. And, like, come to a better understanding. Yeah, exactly. And, uh... I think it was... Uh, oh, this, this part right here. I think it right was in one was... of the earlier... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the friend. Um, yeah, that's I think friends. in one of the earlier novels, I think it was in Bounce in the Sayori and Natsuki one. That's when we've like first started to get the hints of like Natsuki hanging oh, around. Oh, that's you know, right. Natsuki. The people she hangs out with make like it, it's not like directly bullying, but they're making like passing comments to Natsuki about like her height and her appearance and her manga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I just cut this part in the in the summary where Natsuki's like she admits that she knows her friends aren't good, like good friends, but she doesn't want to break off their friendship because she's been friends with them for a long time. Yeah, even though she knows that they're toxic and that this is not a healthy relationship for her to be in with these people, she still wants to be there because she doesn't have anyone else to go to. Yeah. Until she joins the literature club and starts to, you know, get to know people. Especially with Yuri in the staircase. And she ends up all uh, by she them. ends up like going through with breaking off the friendship with her not great friends. And she does not feel good about it. And she has like a panic attack. But Yuri's there and just kind of like calms her down. Yeah, so. it was nice. It's very nice. They like, they just started to get a mutual understanding for each other, and, you know, Natsuki brought in some friendship cupcakes, because that's one of the things that she really loves. Oh yeah, that's what she does at the end, Wait. right? Yeah. yeah. She brought, uh, cupcakes for, uh, Yuri in the hallway so that they can be alone and just have fun, because Natsuki loves baking. That's, like, one of the few things she, she's good at that she loves and that she can be proud of. So when other people eat her stuff and they enjoy it, she feels happy for herself that she did something good. Which is very sweet, very cool. Yeah. I love it. And I feel like I feel like the side stories deserve more focus and conversation, but like one, we don't have the time in, and two, I'm so fuzzy on a lot of the details that I feel like it just wouldn't do them justice anyway. Yeah. But, I mean all the more reason for the listeners to, like, go out and, like, experience them themselves. Like, watch a video. There's a no-commentary video out there that's just all the side stories in a row. Um, just keep playing through it. You can watch it at your own pace. Read through it. Enjoy it. They're all good. Yeah, They're all good. Yeah, Joey and good. I just... We like to trust and self-love the most. Um, funny enough, one dealing with Monica and Sabre, the other dealing with Natsuki. Because so. it really just 
shows you who they really are deep down and how much they just yeah. like change. And w and expands on what you know like about them. I feel like trust is just a really strong start, and then self love is just a really strong finish, and then all the ones in between are fine, but they're not like they're not like strong in one aspect or weak in any aspect. They're just you know they're just the filler, which is fine. Yeah, they're good. They're all good in their own way. Good. I just think trust and self love are the best ones. Writing ones. Mm -hmm. So. And then this all wraps up with Equals, which is just a really short one. It's just all four, all four girls just coming together as friends. Yeah, that's about it, honestly. Yeah. They, they basically have, you know, their whole little shtick going off one by one off the uh, blackboard or whiteboard or whatever it is. Yeah. Just going off like, oh yeah, we learned about trust. We learned about understanding. We learned about respect, balance, reflection and self-love and at the end of the day we're all equals you know bringing all four it, it honestly together. just feels like a victory lap where they just kind of like reiterate everything that was like gone over in each of, each of the side stories yeah, and, and i nice. must say that almost everything i've witnessed has been cringe <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they write all the like main words, the main lessons that they will learn throughout the story on the chalkboard. Yeah. And Monica takes a group photo of all of them, and it's super wholesome. Yeah. And it's cute. Two group photos. One of them has all of them making funny faces. Yeah. So. You know, you're making a little stash with your hair. Yeah. You know, Sayori sticking her tongue out. Monica with the cringe ass duck face. Is it a duck face? I thought she hey. was making a kissy face. That's the duck face, oh, kiss face. Kiss face, duck face, eh, same thing. I guess Whatever. it is. I can, I can kind of see where her like cheeks are sucked in. Ah, it looks yeah, more like nice. a kissy face to me, though. I'll be completely honest. Yeah, kissy face, tongue sticking out, Natsuki with her cheeks puffed out, and mustache ear. Yeah. Very cute. Very wholesome. And that's how it all ends. Good stuff. <laughs> I love it. There's a comment down here that says this is the only side story comment section that isn't full of shippers, and someone replied and said there are too many of them, sir. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. Uh, that's good, that's good, bro. But yeah. I definitely do ship, you know, Monica and Sayori with each other, though. As friends, right? Obviously. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, as just friends. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> boy, there's no real music. <laughs> oh, no. Look, you're a sis. <laughs> I'm gonna have to report you back to the back to Look, man, just because Monica and Sayori are my two favorites, and just because I want them to. I'm not gonna stand, stand here and listen to you badmouth the greatest democracy the world has ever known. Jesus Christ. I swear to God, Jerry. <laughs> Look, just because I want two girls to kiss doesn't make me a sin, okay? Uh, well, uh... <laughs> God, boy, there's yeah. no way <laughs> yeah. Look, you're a sin. I'm gonna have to report you back to kiss, God. Uh... So... Oh, we're we're uh, just over an hour here, but I just want to touch briefly on the on the story for Doki Doki. For Plus, they had to introduce a new, like, system menu, essentially. Because, you know, obviously, you're going to put it on Switch and, like, PlayStation, you can't go, like, deleting game files. So they had to implement a whole new system to do that. And with that, they brought more story, like Metaverse Solutions, building Doki Doki as, like, a, a simulation, basically. For the testing that I mentioned earlier. Um, long story short, Monica's fucking possessed one of the team members and walked away from <laughs> from Doki Doki as a world. Well, you can't just go long story short and then say she possessed someone without explaining anything. Dylan, come on. I'm just, I'm starting you off. I'm telling you where this story's going. I'm gonna fill the details in here in a moment. Have, 
have faith, young grasshopper. No, I refused. <laughs> so, as you play the game, you can pause and you can go to the system menu. Some files are only, like text files, are only accessible at specific times. But, I mean, getting them at those specific times isn't hard. The clues are there, you just gotta follow and find them. Every, uh, every text file has, like, a specific, like, number code that you have to go through the files in, and then there's a specific time that the file is accessible for you to read. And it just kind of gives you background information on Metaverse and the team that are doing this, and a little bit about, like, each of the, like, team members. One of the team members is a man named I Blaster, who, unlike the rest of his co-workers, has a very, like, teenage girl-ish, like, way of typing. Lots of extra exclamation and, like, question marks and LOLs and ha-ha-has and, you know, like, general text to speak, I suppose. Everyone else is much more professional. Um, when you first start, like, when like you first boot up DDLC Plus, um, you get an email that's the most recent one from I called Have a Good Weekend, Everyone. And it's just I very plainly saying that, like, he's going to be gone for the weekend, and tests are going to be run. And, like, it's all just basic, generic business stuff. But the more emails you unlock as you play, uh, the more, like, you go further back. You, you start with the most recent email, and uh, every time you unlock an email, it's an older one, until you get, like, to the beginning. And, um, I don't remember a lot of the details, but I do know that Ive is essentially, like, Dubious little creature getting up to mischief. He is a dubious this little creature. Is no good. His, there's a point where I think one of the like secret text files is talking about I wanting to like because they they mention like the protagonist character that Monica created and they're not sure how she did it. But Ive has an email or a text file somewhere talking about wanting to interact more. And then, if you look at the dates, just before Ive's last email, have a good weekend, everyone, uh, someone else has an email talking about how a mysterious fifth entity has appeared in the visual world, and they're not quite sure where it came from or how it got there. But they're not referencing the protagonist. They're referencing something else. And, if you notice, the Have a Good Weekend Everyone email from Ive is devoid of, like, everything that you know him to be typing as up to that point. There's no LOLs, there's no ha ha ha's, it's just very straight, to the point. Around the same time, one of the other team members also mentions that Ive has been more quiet recently. And, it's because he was possessed by Monica somehow and she used his body to escape the fifth entity in the game that popped up around the time is I, because Monica's essentially swapped places with him. She's more so quiet she in meetings there? because she doesn't want to draw attention to herself, and then the final email from I, the one that you start with, have a good weekend everyone, that is the same name of a file that appears in your system during the main game of Doki Doki, when you get stuck in the classroom with Yuri's dead body all weekend. So wait, is Monica a better body snatcher than William Afton? She essentially did the same thing from what I understand. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah except this time around it's a uh, cute anime girl instead of furries, which, you know, <laughs> pick and choose. What? Pick and choose. Listen, Jer, if there's anything that Five Nights at Freddy's taught me, is that all furries are evil. <laughs> so pyrocynical. Yes. He has cynical in the name. Oh. Hello. Well, he got me there. Uh. <laughs> Jer's like, hey, you know what? Fair point. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Also, 
uh, the emails also mentioned like uh, different VMs, like VM one and VM two, and like fifth, like five different universes in total that they made, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, those are the, just the Dragon Ball universes. So don't you have to worry about that. But yeah, let, 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 let's see. The, so there's I have the email VM up right one, now, and it says it says it's small scale. VM one is a small scale simulation with a, a small number of entities or characters and a like single setting or location to focus on, which would be the literature club, because it's mostly just the classroom and it's just the four girls. VM2 is stated to be much larger and has more characters. So the running theory is that VM2 is where Monica is like gone to assist with because she's trying to save her friends from being trapped in this hell, essentially. And, um... She's run off to, like, do that. But the running theory is that Dan Salvato is going to have another game come out soon that might be, like, totally different from Doki Doki. But it's going to have references to Monica in it somewhere because it's all going to be connected. So... Kind of like, uh, I know Jared and I talked Inscription a while back when we were covering villains. Um, what's his name? Daniel Mullins, that created Inscription. He has references mm -hmm. to his other games in Inscription. He has references to his other games in his other games. Like, it's like they're totally different games and different genres and types, but they all are connected in a way, you know, canonically. Even if it's just little Easter eggs here and there. So, I'm excited. Play the Oros Boros card, Dylan. Oros Boros. We need to do, maybe for another off topic in the future, maybe we'll touch on Inscription more as like a story. Because we mostly just yeah. talked, uh, we, mostly, we mostly just talked Lashy and PO3, but I think this, the game as a whole is <laughs> great. I don't think you need to talk more about it. Those are the two main people, and, and that's all you really need to talk about, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't know, I was just thinking maybe, like, go more in-depth on it, but... I don't know, we'll see. I think... I think Joey's dead. Oh, yeah, I'm dead. Totally possible. Don't worry about me. I need to take my medication so he vanishes. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't worry about me. I'm just getting possessed by Monica right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah, you know how it is. Okay, well, while Joey's got a girl all up inside him, hey -o, we're gonna... <laughs> hey -o. We're probably gonna call it a night here. Because we've been going for over an hour. We pretty much covered everything. Um, I just wanted to touch on the whole, like, Monica's left the building thing, because I think that's cool as fuck. I love the, like, fun little secret story that you have to uncover. You know? Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. I'm really awesome. excited, because, like... That there, there were hints in the original Doki Doki that Dan was going to do something like this, but nothing ever happened. And then we got Doki Doki Plus, and it's just more in-depth. and got more hints that something else is coming down the road that Monica's going to be involved with. So, you know, I'm excited to see what he releases next. So, yeah. Whatever it is, well, we'll probably know. cover it here on an off-topic episode. So... Someday. Someday, hopefully. Just not today. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Weir? My ass has finally decided to eat my hand! It hungers for more! So anyways, <laughs> Jer left the call. Perfect timing, quite frankly. That was a great, you know, send-off from him about ass-eating and he did, very cool. He didn't even stay for it. He didn't even stay for, like, the sign-off. Hey, he, he doesn't need he, he doesn't need to be here for the sign-off. He's too good for that, okay? He has ass-eating pants to deal with, okay? I think you mean hand-eating asses. Same thing. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> So anyways, I think this is a great point to leave it off on, don't you think, Dylan? Yeah. You know, it, it's been great being back again for a second time. For a second so time, So nice. Yeah. I don't know, well, I, I don't even fucking remember who we're talking next. I think it's Nakumaru, if I have to guess. So, 
Uh, yeah, chapter four. Yeah, buddy. Mario and Gundam Tanaka. Yeah. We're going to try and get the podcast back on regular uploads. Um, we're not dead. We're just having a hard time getting with it after a long break. So, I have I'm a video here. in the pipe, but I have, like, little motivation to work on it, so I'm just waiting for the spark to show up, and then hopefully we'll hammer that in a couple more videos out. Well, so. yeah. Very well, I think I'm going to head off now. Yeah, we're at Goodbye. Good night, everybody.